Hello there, calculus kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. And today's lesson, we're going to talk about the mean value theorem. Not that it's an angry theorem, it's just the average theorem. This is going to come up in several different places, but I want to start you, us off by thinking about something that you're probably familiar with, and that is something dealing with toll booths. Now, I grew up in the western United States, and we didn't have a lot of these where I lived, but I know in the eastern U.S. I've traveled there, and in Houston I've traveled there. I see these places all over uh, where you got to pay to use their expressway or their freeway. Well, one thing that can happen when you're using these toll booths is that if you have somebody who's driving along and he enters the toll booth, he's going to pick up a ticket there. So he's going to pick up the ticket, drive across, and then give the ticket here and he'll pay for how far he traveled. Well, some booths, not all of them, but some booths will also calculate not just the distance, but maybe this guy is in a hurry and he goes really, really fast because he knows there's no speed cameras or police officers out there on this stretch. So he takes off and is just going really super fast. Maybe he's going like 85 miles an hour traveling down here, 90 miles an hour. And then when he gets here, he starts slowing down before he gets there so he doesn't get in trouble. And then he turns in his ticket. And when he turns in his ticket, the guy, maybe not this guy, but maybe the system records he was speeding. How do they know that? They know he was speeding because they can, they know the dif distance between here, point A and point B. And if he was, let's say he was averaging, let's say they know that his average speed was 78 miles per hour because they take how long it took him, the timestamp versus how far this was. I should say how far it was divided by how long it took him, right? Because yeah, because it's miles per hour. Okay, so they know that was his average. Well, if he averaged 78, then somewhere along here, I'll call it point C, somewhere along the here in the middle, he had to have been traveling at least 78 miles per hour. They know he was going that fast. In fact, because he had to slow down here, he was even going faster than 78 miles per hour. Okay, that's what the mean value theorem is. They take the average rate of change, and by taking the average rate of change, you can determine you know that at least one place you had to be going that speed, or the instantaneous rate of change has to equal the average rate of change. They must equal each other at least one point somewhere in that interval. All right, so let's formally define this, because this is the mean value theorem. So we have a function f is continuous over an interval a to b. Now notice it's a closed interval. So you want to say a closed interval with brackets a to b. And we also know it's differentiable over that same interval, but this one can be an open interval. We don't care about the endpoints being differentiable. We just care about what's in between. So then there exists a point. Now look here, a point c somewhere in the middle of a and b where that instantaneous rate of change equals the average rate of change. Okay, so that's this where the instantaneous rate of change is going to equal the average rate of change at some point C. This is incredibly important to understand. It's real simple. You just take the derivative and set it equal to the average rate of change or the slope between two points on that interval. Right, let's draw something to, to bring home this point. How about we draw a cubic function, something like that. And I'm going to determine that I have some point, I'll call this one right there, point A. So that'll be my point A, and I'll call this one right here my point B. Okay, so just draw something like this, and then we're going to connect them. And I really hope I can draw a straight line, and okay, that's close enough. I'm happy. That's not really to totally straight, but it's pretty good. So if we draw a straight line on this, th what that gives us is the secant line that would give us a slope between A and B. So we have whatever that slope is, is the average slope, or the, or excuse me, the average rate of change from point A to point B. So the mean value theorem tells us that somewhere along this function, there's going to be another place that has a slope of the average, at least one place. So can you just visually look at it and see? If I'm looking at this thing, I like where's there a slope of that and instantaneous? I'm going to look around here. I'm guessing like right about there, right? Because you can see the, the tangent line would be about even there. And then I'm also thinking somewhere probably right about there. So if I were to take this line and do parallel lines of that, copy this line and drag it right there and you could see there'd be a tangent line and I could copy this line and drag it right there and you'd see there'd be a tangent line. And so I would have in this instance two values of C that are inside this interval where the average rate of change, the slope of the secant line is equal to the instantaneous rate of change of the function somewhere else. 
Okay, I know that might have been a little confusing. I got a lot of marks and lines on this thing. So this is basically it right there. That's what we're gonna be doing today. So the first off, we've got this closed interval two to six and let's find the average rate of change. So this is how we do the mean value theorem. We first gotta figure out what the average rate of change is. So that means we need f of six minus f of two. So it's the change in y over the change in x. And if we figure that out, so I'm gonna have, let's see here, squared is negative 36 plus three times six, 18 plus 10. And then I've got my fraction here minus, and then what's I plug my two in and I get a negative four plus three times two is six plus 10 all over six minus two is four. Okay, so when I work through this and solve all this, I get negative 20 over four. And some of you are like, wow, Mr. Bean, you were really good at this. No, I did this already. I practiced to see what the numbers were. Okay, so you get negative 20 over four, and then that's going to equal negative five. So the average rate of change, or in other words, the slope between point A and B from two to six, the slope is negative five. There's our average rate of change. Now we're going to apply the mean value theorem and figure out when does the instantaneous rate of change equal the average rate of change. So when does the instantaneous, the instantaneous is F prime. So let's figure out what's F prime. I'm taking this thing up here. The derivative of that is negative two X plus three. There's F prime. And I set it equal to the average rate of change, which is negative five. And then we solve that and you get negative eight over here. So X will equal four. So that is the point on the interval from two to six the point four, where x equals four, on this graph has a slope, an instantaneous slope, rate of change of negative five, which happens to also equal the average rate of change. So the mean value theorem is used in our justification. It's used in our, conclu our conclusions that we draw that there has to be a point somewhere on the interval two to six where the slope is negative five. Now, before we go to the next set of questions, let's make sure we have the difference between mean value theorem and intermediate value theorem, because they are different. So if we have mean value theorem, it's what we just did. If you have some function on an interval, if you take from this point to this point, you would take the average rate of change, which is just the slope, and you know that there's gotta be at least one other place, which in this case would be that place somewhere around there. You have two other places that have the same slope. That's the mean value theorem. The intermediate value theorem is where you have an interval. So let's do this again. You have some interval of values and the interval states that whatever this y value is and this y value, so you have a low val y value and a high y value, that every single possible y value in between those exists. So all the intermediate values between the lowest and the highest, that's what the intermediate value theorem is. You'll have to identify when to use which one because it can get a little confusing. So I've got some problems that'll help you use both of them to kind of make it a distinguishing factor on this. Here we have a hot air balloon and it's just going up in the air, up, up, up. Starts at zero feet and as these minutes go by, it's getting gaining height as it travels up. Now it says in here that it's tw a twice differentiable function, that h of t is twice differentiable. And the reason that's important is because a twice differentiable function means that it is not only differentiable, but it's also continuous. The this function is continuous and its derivative is also continuous. All right, so what are we gonna do here? We're first looking at between five and 15 minutes. So from here to here, what's going on? They're saying that it's, there's gonna be a time when the balloon is 50 feet in the air. Is that true? Do we have a time when it's 50 feet in the air? Well, yeah, it's going from 40 to 70, so it's gotta hit 50, but we have to use the intermediate value theorem to show that. Okay, so sometimes you'll be given intermediate value theorem problems. Sometimes it's the mean value theorem problems, and you just have to understand how to find it, which one's which, and then how to use the justification. So for intermediate value theorem, we first need to, to state that h of t is continuous. And I'm just gonna abbreviate that. Why do we have to say that? Because it's a condition for the intermediate value theorem to work. And how do we know it's continuous? Because it was differentiable and that implies continuity. Okay, next up we're gonna say, uh, where does it start? And that is, we're starting at h of five. So what is h of five equal? I'm running kind of small here because I'm also gonna have a justification statement underneath it. All right, so h of five equals 40. And we also have that h of 15, where we're stopping on the interval, is going to equal 70. So we show those two values just to show that we know what we're talking about. And then we come up with our justification statement, which is this thing. So we say, according to the intermediate value theorem, there is a value C such that H of C has to equal 50. So we know it's gonna be 50 feet in the air 
between 5 and 15 minutes. From, so C has to be between 5 and 15. So this is our little work that we show, that we know what we're doing, and then this is the justification. So we have to show both of those. All right, now the second part is where we'll use the mean value theorem. So in this case, we're looking at from 20 to 30. So for those, those two minutes, 20 and 30, we're looking at, is there going to be a time when the velocity is 1.5 feet per minute? Now we don't have velocity on this, but we could figure out the average rate of change between two points. So what are we looking at? We're going from 20 to 30 here. So what is the average rate of change? So in other words, the average velocity on that interval. So to do that, what I'm really looking at is h of 30 minus h of 20, and then that's all divided by 30 minus 20. And that's just slope. It's the average rate between two points. We've been doing this for years now. So what is the average rate between those two points? We take h of 30, which is 80, and subtract h of 20, which in this case is 65 feet. And then we're dividing all that by 10, 30 minus 20. Uh, let's keep simplifying this. 80 minus 65 is 15 over 10. So this is going to equal 1.5. And what is my uh, units? On top, I had feet. On bottom, I had minutes. So this is feet per minute. And that is perfect. So we found that the average velocity is going to be 1.5, which is exactly what the question asked us. Is there a time where it's going to be 1.5? Well, since the average is 1.5, then therefore there must be a time somewhere on this interval, 20 to 30, where the velocity will be 1.5 feet. So we make a quick little justification statement, which is this. According to the mean, oh, wait, 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 darn it. Um, go back and star this. I forgot to say this is really important. Maybe off here on the side, put a little star. And I forgot to kind of start off by saying that h of t is differentiable. I forgot to start with that. Just like we did on the last problem, I showed that this h of t is continuous. To use the mean value theorem, we have to state that h of t is differentiable. Differentiability is required to be able to show that we can use the mean value theorem. Okay, so once we've done that, then we show this little work, and that work shows that it's 1.5. Then our justification statement is, according to the mean value theorem, there must be a value c between 20 and 30 minutes in which the rate of change of h, which is the velocity, has to equal 1.5. All right, and that finishes everything up. So I have on the practice, the practice isn't very long, and I have a variation of test prep problems I've put in this packet in this lesson, because there's so many different ways that mean value theorem can be asked on an AP exam. So I'm giving you a variety of problems to kind of work through here. All right, rock that mastery check. This is Mr. Bean signing off. I'll see you back in our next lesson.